Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the monthly meeting of the Board of Education. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. on Tuesday, April 18th, 2023. At this time, I would like to invite Trustee DiMatteo to introduce Lennox Infante, who will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lennox Infante is a second grade student in Ms. Rod Camp's class at Center Avenue School. Lennox is a kind boy who is always willing to help out his classmates. Another thing about Lennox is that he always has amazing facts about animals. Lennox has been setting goals for himself and working hard to achieve them, which makes us at Center Avenue very, very proud. Lennox just, rec just recently finished an amazing writing and art project about his hero, Connor McHale. Connor is his cousin and is also a private first class in the United States Marine Corps. We are so proud to have Lennox lead our pledge tonight. Come on up here. Yeah, come to the side seats. We're ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great job, buddy. At this time, we're going to get into our uh, presentations, Poetry Madness. So uh, before I call up our architects behind Poetry Madness, just so you know, uh, it mirrors the uh, final four type of basketball, uh, college basketball. And this has been a tradition at East Rockaway High School for a number of years. And it's a, it's a pretty intense vetting process. And we thought uh, tonight we'd share a little bit about the program and we will have uh, our final four students read their poems. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce, as I mentioned, the one of the architects behind the program, uh, Ms. Sarah Perone, who will introduce our students. Over 20 years ago, a beloved English teacher named Virginia Sievers wanted to allow students the opportunity to write freely and creatively with no rubric or rules attached. She created the force that is now Poetry Madness, starting with the entire high school student body writing a poem and then entering into a competition that mirrors the NCAA March Madness Tournament. Every year we give our students a suggested theme and this year's theme was honesty. Uh, and students were not afraid to be honest with us. The responses were certainly honest, sometimes brutally, and they were anything but simple. Some of our students wrote about betrayal in friendships, about bias and deception in the media, about how history is written by the winners. Some of them wrote about filters on social media, uh, the truth about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, about lies that others have told them, and even more importantly, about the lies they sometimes tell themselves. And they did it all with beautiful verse and moving messages. Uh, so for tonight, we do have, I'm going to read off our final four. Um, however, our fourth place contestant, uh, whose name is Lewis Perry, he could not be here tonight, um, but he did a beautiful poem. So we just want to make sure we recognize Lewis for fourth place. Okay. Um, and now in third place, we would like to introduce freshman Julia Menino. Come on down, Julia. I'm running from myself, from my guilt, for the crimson red lies have stained my skin. The mere words I'd spoke made your flowers wilt. No one had yet unearthed a worse sin. My lies have grown penetrating and sharp. I last remember your helpless visage. Gazed into your eyes, I'd been a card sharp, cheating, lying, I'd prayed in visage. While your eyes are helpless, mine are widened. As in, at night, the hours of slumbering. My, the, guilty, the guilt is the monster underneath my bed. My dishonesty is the bright poison berry. But in a way, only as a secret. My stained hands show no remorse. 
No regrets. And in second place, we also have freshman Megan Acuity. Come on down, Megan. Every little droplet of rain. No one speaks about a child's pain when they're sitting in their room all alone, hearing every little droplet of rain. Overthinking, still like stone, all because their trust was taken, like it didn't matter at all. Eyes finally awaken thrown meaninglessly into a mental brawl, the person they should trust and love most, their superhero, confidant, dad, breaking their trust and leaving like a ghost. Now they're just there, confused and sad. How could all these problems originate from their dad? Trying to move on and face this battle, struggling to hold on and get back on the saddle, no longer being able to trust at all, distancing, watching each relationship crumble and fall. Now they're still at that child all alone, sitting so still in their own pain, hearing every little drop of the rain. And now we're going to call up this year's winner, freshman Nick Bay. Honesty. Something that's more valuable than you and me. It's something that makes bridges that you can't see. These bridges are for love, friends, and to make you feel free. We wish we could all have these. However, there are the sinners, the ones who can't stand and watch the winners, the ones who deceive until your head to your shins hurt, the ones who crumble a good heart and make it dust, where people make love into lust, good times into a fuss. Morality into a buzz, enemies from trust, toxicity into a must. They live on lies like a crutch. Those who are honest make the world go round, but those who deceive make the honest look like clowns. They steal joy from the world and limit it to frowns, but honesty should be pearled. Trust in doubt, heaven or hell, heroic or cowardly, morality or fatality. You and I, who do you believe you are? Will you go short or far? The original with the names. Sure, you guys. I think with that, what do you think is better? Yeah. You like this better? Okay. All right, you want them on the stage? Okay. So how about a special thank you to not only our students, but our staff and our high school administration for uh, putting together this and keeping this great tradition alive. So how about a nice round of applause for everybody involved. <laughs> next, it's my honor and privilege to recognize the next hometown hero. Uh, this hometown hero is a district employee and uh, I'd like to just take a moment to uh, recognize him and have him come up and uh, receive his certificate. Jimmy is one of the kindest and most generous human beings you could ever meet. 
He is selfless and always looking for ways to help others. He is thoughtful beyond words. Jimmy is extremely dependable and caring. If you need something done, all you need to do is ask. If he didn't do it, he will. He lives and breathes East Rockway and is well-deserving of the Hometown Hero Award. That's Jimmy Lores. Not yet, Jimmy, not yet. I'm not done. I'm not done. So Jimmy continuously puts others before himself, especially the students at East Rockaway schools. He may not have he, he may not have much, but what he does have, he gives generously to the school to help the kids. He's extremely resourceful, recycling scrap metals and other recyclables for cash for the benefit of school programs. In addition, during the past 35 years, Jimmy has volunteered his time as a junior varsity softball coach. He is known for his kindness on the field and off. He provides baskets filled with delicious nutrient snacks for the sports teams and contributes generously each year to the scholarship for a graduating senior. This list of good deeds continues. Jimmy provides flowers for seniors during graduation ceremonies and school-sponsored events. Jim, Jimmy has certainly set the bar high. Jimmy's favorite role, though, is that of the district school bus driver, which he takes very seriously. Jimmy's care and concern for his student safety is paramount. He goes above and beyond to be sure that the bus is in tip-top condition and up to date on all inspections. He does everything within his control to be sure his riders arrive safely and to their destination. And just to share a quick uh, story, so uh, we know that uh, Jimmy's brother Joe has been in the district for many years, and in my previous conversations with Joe, uh, he would say to me, hey, you know, I, I'm a very lucky guy, and this quote always stuck with me, and what he, what he said about his brother is, I'm, I'm a lucky guy because uh, Santa Claus is my brother, so um, I, I, I don't know if we can get a bigger compliment than that. So in recognition of his extraordinary character, community involvement, philanthropy, and positive contributions to the East Rockway community, I present you with the East Rockway Board of Education hometown hero. Congratulations, Jimmy. Come on up. Okay, our next presentation will be uh, an SEL presentation from our very own Mr. Vincent Healy and Mr. Robert Kennedy. Uh, in just a few short moments, uh, they'll be discussing, you know, what is social emotional learning? What are the key components to it? 
In addition, they will be reviewing what our tier one supports are in our classrooms. And that's something that we've been talking about at the last few meetings. And in addition, at the end of the presentation, there'll be resources uh, that uh, Mr. Healy and Mr. Kennedy will be sharing with you. So without further ado, I'd like to call uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Healy up, our PPS director and our assistant director, Mr. Robert Kennedy. Okay, thank you, Superintendent Itzmaso. Thank you to the members of the Board of Education for giving us this opportunity to present on this very important topic. Um, and good evening to everyone who is joining us for the meeting today and, and online. Um, so we are here to talk to you a little bit about uh, social emotional learning. I'm just gonna make the slide show up and what that is. And so um, gonna go a little bit off script. Last night I was uh, reading to my son at bedtime. We were reading one of his favorite books, which is called Grumpy Monkey. And uh, what, the, what the book is about is there's a monkey, um, He's feeling grumpy. And uh, everyone asks him, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? You don't look happy. You're not, um, you don't seem like you're in a good mood. And eventually it gets to the point where he kind of boils over and he explodes on his friends and storms off. And then one of his friends comes to him and, and you know, he sort of has a moment of reflection, realizes, oh, wait a minute, I am actually feeling this way. And everyone was right. They just care about me. And his friend kind of sits with them and says like, it, it's okay to be grumpy. And it's just sort of this idea of like, we all feel emotions. There's no such thing as a bad emotion. And if we just allow ourselves to feel our feelings, identify them, sit with them, and uh, you know, take positive steps to feel better, um, we'll all come out okay. And so with social emotional learning, there's a lot of conflation with mental health, and there's a lot of information out there in the world about what SEL is, what it isn't, what mental health is, what it isn't. But really what we want to sort of boil down for you today is what we're doing in the district uh, to provide our kids with this very uh, essential skill set. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So it's really uh, a focus on building healthy relationships, learning to recognize and manage your emotions, and develop, and develop positive behavioral habits. So when you're stressed or when you're feeling anxious, what are you doing to help yourself not feel those things or to feel better about feeling those things? Um, we use only evidence-based programs. Um, our primary program, which has been in the district for a number of years, is called Second Step. Um, in recent years, the 21-22 school year, we added two components to Second Step. One is the uh, anti-bullying unit, which focuses on more what to do when you are being bullied or uh, if you see a friend who's being bullied, how to respond to that in an appropriate way. Um, but also the child protection unit, which brought the district into compliance with Aaron's law. Um, so we use Second Step. Last year, we also um, started to bring in two other programs. One is called Source of Strength. That's at the high school. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a bit. Uh, and Ruler. We also use the Prepare You curriculum in 10th grade, but that's actually part of the health curriculum. So we're not going to get into that tonight. Um, so we based our SEL uh, program on the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning, CASEL. It's a national standard um, that most districts use and follow. And uh, what Castle has is this little wheel and it breaks down uh, the five key components of social emotional uh, learning uh, into uh, you know, pretty uh, basic descriptions. So the first part is self-awareness and it's the ability to understand one's own emotions, thoughts and values and how they influence our behavior. The next one is self-management. So the ability to manage one's emotions, thoughts and behaviors effectively in different situations to achieve their goals and aspirations. So it's, it's not just recognizing how you feel, but it's how you use those feelings to achieve what you want to achieve in this world. Social awareness, our ability to understand the perspectives of, of others and empathize with them, um, regardless of their experiences. Our relationship skills, the abilities to establish and maintain healthy and supportive relationships in our lives. Uh, both with individuals and in groups, and responsible decision-making. So how do we teach our kids to make decisions that are going to affect their lives in a positive way um, and how to discourage them from making choices that may have a negative impact on their lives? So all of what we're talking about tonight uh, falls under the category of Tier 1. So Tier 1 is just a way of saying everyone. So the way it works is it's, it's basically a pyramid. So Tier 1 is at the bottom of the pyramid. It's the biggest group. As you require more support, you move up the pyramid. So tier two would be maybe um, some sort of group counseling or a social skills group. And then if you're in tier three, that's when you would you know, require 
probably ongoing counseling with a school social worker, school counselor, or the school psychologist. Um, it's designed, tier one is designed to be proactive. So the idea is that if we're teaching kids positive social skills and how to have positive relationships, we're not going to run into larger problems down the line. Um, and if a student demonstrates a higher level of need, of course, they would be referred to a member of our support staff. Um, so a little bit more about Second Step. So it is an evidence-based program. What that means is that there have been numerous research studies that show that it's, it's effective in improving outcomes. Um, it teaches uh, kids some very important skills, such as empathy, emotional regulation, uh, social problem solving, and conflict resolution. So just to give you an example of what a Second Step lesson looks like, um, I saw Ms. McCabe uh, earlier this year in a kindergarten classroom in this scenario. Uh, Ms. McCabe is at the front of the classroom. She has one puppet as a snail, one puppet as a puppy. Uh, puppy and snail get into an argument because puppy has called snail a name, and then they learn how to basically work through that, apologize, uh, you know, snail apologizes to puppy, puppy accepts his apology, and they learn how to basically coexist productively. Then the kids do a little uh, dance, which has like a catchy song to go along with it. And then they have sort of like a group where they can they can ask questions of the social worker um, about the lesson or about strategies that they've learned uh, as part of the lesson. So as I said, it's provided uh, primarily through our social workers and school counselors and what's called a push-in model. So um, during uh, class time, we, we never try to we always schedule it where we're not interrupting the same part of class every time. So at the high school, we would, you know, push into English one month, math one month, science another month. Um, at the elementary school, we try to pick times when the kids aren't doing anything academically focused. Um, and uh, in the elementary, we push in twice monthly. At the high school, it's once a month. Uh, typically, the elementary takes about 30 minutes for a lesson. At the high school, it's a little bit longer. It's 41 minutes uh, full period. Okay. So that is second step. Now, the thing about second step is because it's a push-in model, the kids are exposed to it you know, once or twice a month. It's a good lesson. They have takeaways. The teacher uh, reinforces what was taught in the lesson, but it's not constantly top of mind. So we, when we looked for new programs last year, we really wanted something that was going to stick with uh, kids every minute of every day, become ingrained in the culture. And so that's what brought us to ruler and sources of strength. So what Ruler is, is it's from the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. Um, the person who created its name is Dr. Mark Brackett. Um, and what, what, what it basically is, is it's a check-in um, at, 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 it, at its most simplest form. It's teaching kids how to recognize I'm feeling this way, uh, and because I'm feeling this way, I need to follow these strategies or speak with this adult or have a peer that I can speak to that will help me to process these feelings and not feel these ways. So that's really at its most basic form. Um, but really what it is, is it's changing the culture. It's, it's setting the, this expectation that it's okay to feel feelings in school. It's okay to feel, you know, uh, any given way in a situation, but it's how you process those feelings and how you change your decisions that will make you ultimately successful. And so with Ruler, what we've started to do is... Um, We've, we've met with our faculty. We've introduced uh, to them that Ruler will be rolled out to students next year. We've developed what's called a charter in each building. So at Rame Avenue School, this is how we want to feel when we work in the building. This is how we want our students to feel. This is what we want our culture to be. And the same uh, is true of Center Avenue. So that was developed uh, with the building principals and the staff. And then so the next steps will be to introduce the other elements of Ruler, such as the mood meter, which helps you identify how you're feeling, and the meta moment. Um, so the, really the, the, the core of Ruler is understanding the value of emotions, building skills of emotional intelligence, and creating and maintaining a positive school climate. So it's basically like you know, a reminder of this is how we want to feel every day when we come to school. Uh, the research on Ruler, which is available, this presentation will be available online and there'll be links to uh, all three programs, the research behind them um, for any parents who are interested. Uh, it shows positive shifts in school culture and environment, enhance academic performance because kids are not necessarily getting into conflict or, or perseverating on something that may have happened to them, but instead they're able to focus on their academics, better quality relationships among students and with teachers, and fewer instances of bullying or aggressive behavior. And so the way you roll this program out is it, it literally takes years because you're, you're, you're starting from the ground up with the culture and you're just ingraining into everyone like, 
this is, you know, like it's okay to feel this way and, and we want you to, to feel however you're feeling, but what are we going to do about it? And so it's just getting people to talk more, essentially. Um, and with that being said about rule, I'm going to turn things over to Mr. Kennedy, who will talk a little bit about source of strength at the high school. Thank you. Those button? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. So I think the key takeaway uh, that Mr. Healy was just speaking about is the change of culture and the focus on a positive culture um, within the school, within the district. So Ruler begins that conversation um, in the elementary, and then we hope to take that and bring it up to the high school and continue to grow uh, in a positive direction. And sources of strength is the perfect um, example of that because it begins as an upstream approach to social and emotional learning and it was, and, it, and it's a suicide prevention program, but in a different way um, than, than maybe we've seen things like in the past that might have focused on scaring straight and, and showing all the bad things that happen and showing all of, um, you know, the depression and, and, and that focus. And really what the, the focus of Source of Strength is, is maintaining a positive climate and looking at our everyday lives and finding the positivity in there and sharing that. Um, because we have a lot of negativity every single day, obviously, in all different aspects of our lives. And teenagers deal with that every single day on social media, on what they watch, uh, all over. Um, so the focus of social strength seems simple because it is. It's let's take a moment and focus on positivity and let's have our peer leaders in our school focus on that support um, and providing that. So. The goal over the over the coming years, as Mr. Healy again noted, these are these are programs that take time to, to develop roots, um, is to have this by, the, by, by um, run by the students entirely and facilitated by adults. So there are adult advisors who've joined our program, um, and we have students who've joined our program, and now we're looking at growing it. So over the past year, we've had successful campaigns, um, and we've also kind of re-examined the program and looked at how it could best support our district. And I think we were all in the room at the same time with all the advisors trying to come up with plans for how we can provide positive um, interactions within our district. And the thought came up that our students are so successful at doing. Um, and we see that in rock rivalry. We see these kids go out there, whether they are the students who are putting on the entrance or the students who are creating the stand or the students who are participating in the music. Our students excel at doing. So we said, we had a moment where we said, we want this to be more like rock, like rock rivalry meets uh, sources of strength. And we wanted to focus on campaigns. So this year, um, we um, are focusing on promoting this further, um, getting more of a student involvement. We're, we're visiting all the students in eighth through 11th grade um, to, to share all, you know, what, what the program's done so far and our direction for next year and creating a calendar next, um, so that we can run, hit the next year running um, and, and have an idea of the different ways, we, the different things that we're going to do throughout the year that are, that are campaign based um, and can focus on creating this positive environment. So we're really excited to be looking forward to this next year. Um, what we see up here and, and, and this is Mr. Rogers. So uh, I look around and there might be a few of you who don't know who Mr. Rogers are, is. And congratulations, you are young, and, and I'm happy for you at that moment. But, but for those of us who do know Mr. Rogers, what we do know is he was, a, he was an engaging television show that we watched daily and we were excited to watch because he spread the message of kindness. And overall, that's what we're looking to do. And um, the quote we have here is, when we talk about our feelings, they become less overwhelming, less upsetting, and less scary. The people we trust with that talk um, can help us know that we are not alone. Love is at the root of all learning, all relationships, and love or the lack of it. Everyone longs to be loved, and the greatest thing we can do is let people know that they are loved and they are capable of caring. And what this shows us is that SEL learning is not a new idea. It's not a new approach. It's something that needs to be taught, and it's something that benefits the students of our district. So um, we continue to be working hard daily, um, continuing to develop the school climate, and uh, we look forward to it. So that's what's of strength. Okay. Um, so I just want to touch really briefly on staff training. So um, all of our non-instructional personnel were trained uh, through a program called the Crisis Prevention Institute. And um, what that is, is uh, it's a verbal de-escalation strategy. And so the idea is that as someone walks into the building, whether it's you know a, a student who's upset or a parent who's upset, 
the first person who they're meeting is probably a monitor or a security aide or someone who is non-instructional. And so that person, it's, it's all in their approach. So are they approaching this person who is clearly upset with empathy? Are they listening? Are they providing that person with, with, with choices that make sense to that person? And so we thought it was really important um, to train all of our non-instructional staff in this because they're dealing with kids every day, they're meeting uh, parents every day, and we really want it to be a culture wide of, you know, people are here to help. Um, going back to Mr. Rogers, look for the helpers. That's what we want um, to instill in the culture here. Um, ruler training is ongoing for our elementary staff, and we will continue to support our elementary staff uh, through next year and beyond as they begin to roll it out to our students. And Source of Strength, um, it's, a, it's a single day training, and what you do is you start with a small group of students and teachers, and you kind of grow it organically by word of mouth. People say like, hey, this is awesome, you should be a part of it, and they recruit new people in, and, and we're hoping uh, to continue to grow that program in the years ahead. Um, so all of that being said, uh, this presentation does contain links for more information about the research on all of these programs. Um, it also contains my contact information as well as Mr. Kennedy's, and we are happy to speak to any parents or students um, or anyone out in the community who would like more information about the program or to ask us questions. Um, but with all that being said, are there any questions from the Board of Education? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so much of, yes, so so much of social emotional learning is is growth and, and leading by example. And, you know, we don't want it to just fall on the teachers or fall on the mental health support staff. So much of it is building capacity in kids to be peer leaders and to share their successes with their peers and to help their peers along. And so that's that's a big part of the culture piece. And that's, you know, and truthfully, it takes longer, but um, Source of Strength uses the analogy of the Brooklyn Bridge. Like a lot of people's taxes went up and no one saw anything being built for years and people got very upset and they said like, what is happening with this bridge? And uh, ostensibly the architect was brought in to, to face the music. And what he said was, you don't see anything now because we're building a foundation that will last the test of time. And so we feel like the slow growth of these programs is because they will be lasting and, and not just something that we're slapping a bandaid on. And so um, hopefully I answered your question. Yeah. The leadership uh, situation Yes, correct. Yes, that's a big part of source of strength is 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 peer leaders. So yeah. So thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, have a great evening. Hey, good evening, everybody. I want to thank you for this opportunity to talk about um, some changes that are going on in our curriculum and our instruction around the new New York State science learning standards. And I'm joined by our chairperson for science up here at the high school, uh, Dame Forbes. So welcome, Dame. Thank you. She's going to be taking over in a few minutes. Um, but as I always love to do, I like to go back to our mission. The East Rockaway School District has a mission, and all of our choices need to follow in this mission. And when we're talking about these specific science standards and changes we're making, we're really talking about having more engaging classrooms, using innovative practices, challenging our students, inspiring them to think, live, and learn like scientists and engineers, and using that creative piece to solve the world's problems. Um, you know, I, we've, we've been talking about this slide since the beginning of September, and, and I love that Mr. Di Tommaso put this together. Um, but what drives us here, 21st century learning and the New York State Science Learning Standards certainly do a lot of that, and Ms. Forbes will tell us a little more. It's a commitment to continuous learning on the part of our students and our staff in changing how they're teaching. Um, the power of feedback to our students in real time. With that, we know results will follow because we are always putting our kids first. And without further ado, Ms. Forbes. Thank you. 
Good evening, school board and community members. Thank you again for having me tonight. So there, I wonder if this has a Okay, never mind. I thought it had a laser. It's okay. All right. Oh, it does. Where's the laser? Ah, okay, cool. Wonderful. All right. Science education has always been evolving over many, many and several years, but it was in the 1990s through the development of the benchmarks in science that we really started to form a structure of where we wanted science education to go in our countries. Following the benchmark, we had the framework for science, which was from 2010 to 2011, which really led a, a foundation of what are some of the needs that our kids have in this country. From that point, the development of the next generation science standards, which is commonly called NGSS, led to the, to the development of the New York State Science and Learning Standards, which is commonly called NISLA standards. The NISLA standards were adopted in 2017, and it's based on what's called three-dimensional learning, where there is a deliberate and integral um, combination of three pegs. So if you can imagine this stool here has three support legs. All right, there is the disciplinary core ideas, commonly called the DCIs, which focuses on what the students are learning. So you will see coming forward that there's going to be some change in some of the language that we'll be addressing some of the tests. For example, we had living environment, that test is going back to biology. And we had the um, Earth Science region, it's going to be called the Earth in Space to accommodate some of the new technologies and needs of our society. So that's what the students are learning. And the second peg is the science and engineering practices, which is directly aligned to what we need our students to know for 21 century learning. All right, and this is how the students will learn. So you will see things like projects, you'll see things like phenomena, that's a term, if you have any students in an elementary school that I've heard them use, um, which is the kind of like the base of how they dive into their science learning. And the third one is the cross-cutting concepts, which is what students look for. So imagine patterns. What patterns do we see across different sciences, across different content areas that relate to the science education that the students are doing? Okay. So how does this shift look like? Um, would there is a reduction in the scope of the, of the amount of, of topics that the students are learning so that they can focus and dive deeper into the content that's going to help them go further. There is an emphasis placed on inquiry-based learning where the students are really concentrating on identifying, observing, deconstructing phenomena to better understand the content knowledge. And emphasis is placed on application of skills rather than the transfer of knowledge, which is a really big shift. So the shift really goes from what the students know to what they're doing, from getting the right answer to the process of working through a problem, from just being proficient and knowing what a teacher wants, this is what the teacher wants, to reflecting and refining models that the students are working on, a change from just pure memorization to being able to use a claim, evidence, and reasoning to solve problems that we have in science. So here in East Rockaway, in the elementary schools, we have adopted a curriculum called Science 21, which is an inquiry-based elementary school program that aligns with the NISLA standards, and our, we have a subscription through that through our P and W BOCES. This is a really great, um, program. It comes with kits for hands-on materials. The teachers are in the process and, and in some cases have already been trained in how to use um, the Science 21 efficiently, so they do have that ongoing professional training. All right, students get to use the science and engineering practices to help them make sense of their world. So I had an opportunity earlier this year to observe, it was a fifth grade class, and they were, lurking, they were learning about the seasons. And in that, the students did an activity where they were um, mimicking what it looks like when the planet is rotating and how, where part would be dark, what part would be light, the length of time and day. And it was really a very rewarding experience to see the students thinking about science. 
They were able to draw models and refine those models with the help of their teacher and discuss with their peers what they're learning. That's a deeper level of understanding than just the teacher telling you, this is how the seasons happen and this is what's going on. They are really discovering on their own. Okay. Okay. In the sixth and seventh grade, one of the shifts that has taken place from the state is that the, L, the, uh, the middle school band spans sixth through eighth grade. So it was necessary for me to start this year working with the sixth and seventh grade teachers to make sure we align the curriculum to be in, um, to be in line with what is expected in the science and learning standards. So I've been working with them once a month. We meet via Zoom. A couple times a year, they've come to up to the high school to our meeting so we can make some, um, just discuss what we're doing in terms of the middle school. Teachers in the science department in the high school level have formed a PLC on their own where they're working on changing their lessons to reflect the 3D learning style. All right, and that will be an ongoing process as we get closer to those exams in the high school. Okay, the high school regents curriculum, we've taken a look at that and are in the process and have actually transitioned them from what we have in what's called the core curriculum to what is going to be needed for the um, at NISLIS test when they arrive. Stat science staff members are encouraged and have been receiving professional development in-house at our superintendent conference days and also are attending different workshops that are offered by our local BOCI so that they can be prepared for the changes as they are still ongoing. So what is the time rollout for these exams? So next year in 2024 will be the implementation of the fifth grade test. Okay, in June of 2025 will be the first iteration of the new biology regions and the earth and science regions. And the following year we'll have chemistry and physics. And so that's the rollout for right now. One of the things that's very exciting about this is that we're really working to prepare our students here in East Rockaway with these 21st century skills. And us adapting and moving forward in that direction is really gonna help them develop the skills to be competitive in our growing, increasingly growing technical society. I'll turn it back over. Thank you. Um, I just wanna go back for one second. You, you, when you, some of your parents have been around a little while, you might be thinking, I thought the science test was in fourth grade. And it was, but part of the redesign of the standards was they were put into grade level bands. So now there's a third through fifth grade band and the test takes place at the end of fifth grade. And it's actually a three year test, um, including uh, hands-on assessments that start taking place in third grade. and. The, those, um, they're almost like labs that we need to hold on to and keep, and they go into the performance assessment at the end of fifth grade. Um, and the other band is sixth through eighth grade. Um, and for students who take the eighth grade science test, it would be the same process. However, here in East Rockaway, because we universally accelerate and all of our students are taking a high school regents class in eighth grade, we won't take the New York State eighth grade science exam because they're taking a regents exam instead. So just, you know, for those of you who might be confused about fifth grade, fourth grade. Uh, but going back to um, what Ms. Forbes was saying at the end, what we're really doing is not changing or adding or doing different. This goes along with a lot of the other things we we're talking about. Back in December, I uh, presented about project-based learning. And really what the New York State Science Learning Standards say to us is science is best learned through projects. And we already know that students learn best through projects because in most of our worlds and most of our careers, whatever we might do, most of our work is in projects. So why not start that in school and why not teach students how to learn in a team in a project. So <clears throat> through these standards, they're communicating more, they're collaborating more. They need to think critically about the phenomena in their world. It's not just about learning a list of facts and regurgitating them on a test anymore. And this is a really a way for us to incorporate all of those 21st century competencies. I know that uh, Mr. DiTomaso loves to call them essential skills. These are the skills that make our students future ready 
and the New York State Science Learning Standards do that in the sciences, in the sciences and engineering. And I do want to commend Ms. Forbes because even though her title is 712 chairperson, she's working with our elementary school teachers and students as well to make sure that our students' foundation has them ready for those really challenging science courses they take up here at the high school. Um, and with that, we uh, welcome any questions from the board. We don't know how it's scored yet because the actual test itself is not published by New York State yet, but the four, they need to do four, um, they're not called labs, um, investigations. There are four investigations which are the equivalent of extended labs that you would do in a, in a regents course. Um, and you can do the four at any point in the three years, but we recognize the best way to do that would be over time. So um, the plan moving forward will be, there'll be one investigation in third grade, there'll be one investigation in fourth grade, and two investigations in fifth grade as the student's skills develop. And we just, we need to hold on to those um, reports that the students create at the end of those uh, investigations. And there will be some manner of rubric that the state has not released yet on how to score them. And it'll go into a composite score along with, I'm sure, some manner of traditional written exam like all the other exams that come from the state. Yeah, please. So just to clarify one point, the investigations themselves will not be scored as part of the exam, but 15% of the content from completing those investigation could be included on the exam. Okay, so it's not, I have to do this lab and I'll, this lab and I'll be tested on the facts of this lab, because that would not be what we want to do in 21st century skills. What they need to do is what's the process that I use to solve this? And if I see a similar phenomena or scenario, how can I apply what I've been learning over this time to solve whatever, yeah, correct. And much and much like the Regents courses, students need to complete those investigations to be able to take the exam the same way you need to develop, you know, I was at 1,200 lab hours to take the science Regents in high school. Minutes. Minutes, sorry, minutes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Sure. Sure. I'm going to go back to the visual. Visuals are always helpful. So in a typical 3D lesson, you can, I'm just going to do chemistry because it's in my wheelhouse. So you will have content that you want to do, say it's acid and bases, for example, that's the content. How to begin the acid and base unit, I might start with a phenomena. So an interesting phenomena might be talking about acid rains in oceans, which is something that's real world and applicable and holds some interest to, to bring the students in. All right, so we'll start with that and we'll have some kind of discussion. We could use any one of the AVID protocols to have a discussion about this phenomena and come up with a framework of how we're gonna go about learning about acids and bases. So it no longer becomes just static in that I have to tell them that acids have pHs lower than, than seven. They'll actually be discovering that as we move through the phenomena that we are using to engage the students. Uh, so in terms of a practice that you might do, so it might be an investigation that the students may come up with and they might want to see what is the effect of adding certain pollutants if they're considered about acid rain. We have pollutants that are going into the ocean that is affecting the wildlife and inhabitants of the ocean. So they might want to de design their own experiment in order to come up with ways to combat that or to just see the effects that it might have on coral shells or things of that nature, which is something that we'll be able to do in the classroom. And then the cross-cutting concept could be where is this, what kind of things can we do co-curricularly that would uh, positively impact our knowledge and our society about this. They might want to go ahead and do some kind of publication. They might see the link to how this is related to historically um, different kinds of industries that have been in a particular environment and then do it that way. So that's how it kind of ties in together in a 3D lesson. And then I'll just I'll just give a biology example or a living environment example um, for the cross-cutting concepts specifically. 
if you think about cycles in nature, so we have the water cycle. So, you know, we have water in the ocean, it evaporates, it goes up, it condenses into the clouds, it rains again into the ocean, we have a cycle. Photosynthesis is also a cycle where we have energy from the sun, comes down, it goes into the leaves of the plant, the carbon dioxide and the oxygen cycle through the system. So what are the similarities between the water cycle and the carbon dioxide oxygen cycle that comes out of photosynthesis. We want students to see those relationships because those connections, those neural pathways they have up there will help the learning stick better rather than just this is the water cycle, this is that cycle. It's, it's fun if you're into science. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on. Item D, old business. Okay, um, I'd like to address uh, four things that I did, uh, actually two things that I spoke at our last work session. Uh, just because uh, I'm not sure who was able to tune into that and then uh, review and recognize some of our staff members. So first I'd like to start with um, the school counselor position. I'm uh, you know, incredibly proud to be able to say that we are uh, continuing uh, Ms. Rebecca Mantle and I wanna thank the community for sharing their concerns. Um, I do want to say regrettably, I read my statement and I just really read it because I wanted the community to think that this was not a random decision that we made, that we had a plan behind it. And that, you know, in hearing the community, I underestimated the granular level of the impact of the guidance counselors. So we were fortunate this time. I can't guarantee it every time. We had a few ret unexpected retirements in our non-instructional staff and our instructional staff that it will make, made this possible. So again, I just want to, uh, you know, reemphasize that she will be coming back. Um, I appreciate, you know, how respectful the community was in sharing their concerns on that night. And, you know, especially the students that really hit home with us. And, you know, I thank the Board of Education too for giving me that mission to, you know, try to find a way uh, to make that work. So um, just wanted to uh, make sure that the public was aware of that. Uh, secondly, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the lockdown scenarios. I'm going to repeat uh, basically uh, what I said at the, at the last work session. Uh, and I want to start with apologizing because I understand how traumatic it was for our students and our parents and families and staff members uh, throughout this process. So what I want to do is I'll start with a, a little bit of a timeline uh, and hopefully you could see the connections and we can see the key takeaways from the, this scenario. So uh, on February 9th, approximately 8.30, we had our, our first uh, lockdown and that was due to a technician who was working in our garage on a motion sensor. And what happened was uh, the technician tripped the system, it put us down into a lockdown and that's what triggered the alarm. Uh, you know, the system was restored and operational uh, that night. We had no reason to believe that there would be any further issues because of the work that the technicians were doing. So um, with that being said, let's fast forward to our Thursday, March 30th. So at approximately 11.06 a.m., the lockdown alarm sounded again, unfortunately. And this was a totally unrelated to the February 9th incident. It was randomly triggered in the gym area, not in the garage this time. And this was a different monitor sensor. So what we immediately did was digital provisions was not working on this system and it was a separate zone. This was the major difference between the 9th and the 30th. This was random. We did not anticipate this happening. It wasn't because someone was working on the system. 
So the result was the staff, you know, followed their protocols for a good amount of time. You know, we weren't sure, you know, if it was a true lockdown situation or not, you know. But I will tell you this, that in under 30 seconds, the building was locked down. I want to uh, mention uh, Mr. Schaefer, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Taranova, and Dr. Krause, you know, have their staff incredibly trained and followed protocol. And this was recognized not only by our security uh, uh, our security partners in Altaris, but also the Nassau County Police Department was incredibly impressed. So I was incredibly impressed. And also, you know, the staff kicked in, we went into motion, it was like muscle memory. Uh, and that's due to the, you know, the diligence of the building administration. Uh, so then what happened, you know, the police arrived on the scene shortly thereafter within four to five minutes in response to, the, to this alarm being sounded. Now, once it was determined, and that took some time because we, you know, it, any, it could, a lockdown could happen in an area of the building that we're not aware of. But once we found out it was determined it was a false alarm, okay, we notified parents. So uh, Mr. Schaefer sent out an email to the parents, and then shortly thereafter, I sent an email out. Now, we were still following our protocols in the building, but my main purpose was to let parents know that the kids are safe, that there was no threat, and that the alarm was sounded unintentionally. So that was my main purpose. So I did send it out a little prematurely before the drill was over, but I wanted parents to understand that we were all safe there. Um, so as a result of that lockdown, I can tell you, you know, how we acted as an administrative team. Uh, within 12 hours, the system was rewired and separated from the alarm system. So it's my understanding that the previous company we had linked the alarm system with our lockdown system. That's where the short happened. Uh, and that's what we weren't aware of. So what we did was we, it was completely rewired that night. We installed new boxes. Uh, we rewired a separate panel so this cannot happen again. Uh, the technicians were there, in fact, until, you know, well after 12 o'clock that night, just to make sure that we got this straight and for everybody to understand you know, how important this is for us to maintain a system that is operational. Yes. So I have an electrical background. We had the ability to uh, interview these guys. So the old system was on a common loop. So it had more of an ability for a, a false alarm. Now each button is a home run back. So each button is its own home run. So this should really take care of the issue. Electrically sounding much better than what we had. So I just wanted to jump in and say that it's much better system than we started. Right, and we, and, we, and we were fortunate. I was able to uh, have a representative, actually the president of Digital Provisions, uh, come speak to the Board of Education and explain, you know, uh, what the issue was and what happened. Um, so um, here were the key takeaways from that situation. The first thing, the most important thing, that everyone was safe and the hallways were cleared quickly. Uh, the police arrived on the scene and did not hesitate to act. I also want to publicly thank the Nassau County Police for their diligence in this and their support. And also, it happened to be on a Thursday where our Altaris representative, uh, which is our security firm, was also there and was very helpful in helping us uh, work through this unfortunate situation. As we, as we mentioned, the wiring uh, was... Uh, was redone and panels were set separately as Mr. Kilgus so uh, eloquently stated. Um, and what we did next is, you know, we wanted to provide mental health services uh, for our students and for the following days. And we did do that. Um, we provided, uh, the administration went into the classrooms the next day. Uh, we reached out to kids who we know who were stressed about the situation. Uh, we brought extra support staff up to the high school for those reasons. And not only did we provide support for our students, uh, but uh, Mr. Healy and the PPS office provided a, a, actually a three-level varied support for our staff, which if staff, staff were slightly worried and had questions, they had someone to reach out to. If they were very concerned, uh, we had a, a company, um, can, uh, Open Arms, uh, which is... Uh, who we deal with in terms of uh, dealing with uh, stressful situations. And we had a third layer of if teachers were uh, really stressed about the situation and needed to talk to somebody. So those support services were not only offered to the staff and the students to try and rectify the problem. So again, on behalf of the district, myself, I take responsibility. I apologize for this. 
and uh, I apologize to the community for what it had created. Uh, but I look for the silver lining in things, and, and, and some things went very well. And we internally made some improvements uh, in our operation. So, um, you know, I, I am thankful for that. But I did want to uh, recognize that and state that publicly for the community, for anybody who was not at our work session. Um, next, I would like to uh, talk very briefly and just make a quick statement uh, about the budget. Um, so the agenda uh, has the approval of the 23-24 proposed budget. The budget has a year-to-year -year increase of 3.15. Now, this is an important fact because New York State has failed to approve their budget, which was due on April 1st. We used the governor's proposal along with the reserves and fund balance to support a proposed tax levy of 1.83. This is below the tax cap for the fourth year out of the past five, and it, it, this is an incredibly responsible, uh, fiscally responsible budget that is lower than many of our surrounding communities. I know uh, Mrs. Screel couldn't be here with us tonight, but if anybody would have any questions, they can direct them to uh, her or myself uh, in the superintendent's office. And last but not least, I'd like to recognize and celebrate uh, a new staff member uh, to our East Rockaway family. Uh, I'll read just a brief bio, she's here tonight. Uh, so uh, Bonnie McClellan has over 20 years experience in various educational roles. Most certainly she has held a position, I'm sorry, most recently she has held a position of K-12 instructional technology coach in the Farmingdale School District where she assisted teachers, students, administrators, and staff with digital learning and curricular strategies. She provided support individually in collaborative teams and within the classrooms to design, implement, and support learning opportunities that include the purposeful use of instructional technology. In addition, Bonnie was the district's teacher center director where she developed and managed staff development programs and activities as well as community learning events such as parent university and family math night. During the summer, Bonnie was the principal of the extended school year program for special education students. Always an educator at the heart, Bonnie is a former elementary uh, classroom teacher also in Farmingdale. She's excited to begin the next stage of her career in the East Rockaway School District as the Director of Technology and Learning Analytics. Bonnie is looking forward to working with everyone, learning and engaging in East Rockaway traditions, and sharing her passion for innovation with students, while always focusing on the outcome and not the tool. Please join me in giving Bonnie an East Rockaway warm welcome. Moving on, pub public comments on agenda items. If you are viewing tonight's live stream of the meeting and you have questions regarding items on the agenda or other school related items, you can email them to the Board of Education at ERSD.org. This email will be monitored throughout the evening. Please make sure to include your full name and address. I also want to remind you that most concerns are appropriately addressed with your child's teacher or building principal. Other district questions should be directed to Mr. DiTomaso, our superintendent. Matters including Involving curriculum and instruction should be addressed to Mr. Murray, and matters involving budget and facilities should be directed to Ms. Shrio. If you need techno technological assistance or have issues with a device, please reach out to Ms. Bonnie McClelland. Anyone who is attending in person, if you would like to make any comments, please complete a comment card. At this time, are there any comments regarding tonight's agenda? All right, uh, moving on. Approval of minutes. Are there any questions regarding the minutes from last month's meeting? No, no. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of March 21st, 2023's meeting? Motion. Motion by Mr. DiMatteo. Second. Second by Mr. Volpes. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? So moved. Uh, item two, acknowledgement of monthly reports and correspondence. Uh, I see no correspondence here. Uh, are there any questions from the board on the receipt of the monthly financial reports? No. no. Okay, moving on. Moving on to BOCES proposed budget. 3A, whereas the Board of Cooperative Educational Services of Nassau County, here in after Nassau BOCES has proposed and presented its proposed administrative operations budget for 2023-2024 school year, 
July 1st, 2023 through June 30, 2024, now thereafter to be resolved that the Nassau Boshi's proposed administrative operations budget for 2023-2024 school year in the amount of $25,220,812 be hereby approved by this board and authorized that the district clerk to execute the ballot of the certificate of the file same with Nassau Boshi's. 3B, where is the filing of three vacancies of the Board of Cooperative Educational Services of Nassau County will be determined by votes of competent school district boards of education to be conducted at a regular or special meeting, such as the board being held on April 18th, 2023. And whereas the trustees of the Board of Education and each competent school district by resolution may cast one vote for each vacancy to be filled, provided that no more than one vote can be cast by any candidate be it hereby resolved that the Board of Education of the Strakaway Union Free School District hereby elects by a majority vote its members three of candidates listed below in alphabetical order for such vacancy of the Board of Cooperative Educational Services, Deborah Coates, Lawrence Greenstein, and Eric B. Schultz, and authorize the district clerk to cast the ballot for each one of these said individuals for their election of the Board of Cooperative, Cooperative Educational Services. Can I have a motion to vote on the three vacancies of the Board of Cooperative Educational Services of Nassau County will be determined by votes of competent school district boards and education to be conducted at the regular or special meetings of such boards of education to be held on April 18th, 2023. Motion. Motion by Mr. Volpes. Second. Second by Mr. DiMatteo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? So moved. Moving on. Uh, item four, consent, ag consent agenda. Are there any questions from the board? on the consent agenda. No. Recommendation of the superintendent's personnel schedules 5A through 5I, other items 6A through 6M, approval of the SCE and SPSE recommendations 7A and budget transfer 7A. Can I have a motion to approve? Motion. Motion by Mr. DiMatteo, second? Second. Second by Mr. Volpes, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying so moved. Policy matters. Is there a policy submitting report? There's no report, just that. Yep. yep. All right, so there's no committee report. There are six policies up for adoption tonight. Uh, prohibited student uh, conduct, use of timeout rooms, physical restraints in advers adversities, homebound instruction, expense reimbursement, internal audit function, Parent Bill of Rights for Student Data Privacy and Security. Are there any questions from the board on policies 9B1 through 5? No question. Can I have a motion to approve policies 9B1 through 5? Motion. Motion by Mr. DiMatteo. Second. Second by Mr. Volpes. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstain? So moved. Uh, item C, there are nine new policies up for review listed below. We'll be meeting in May to review these nine policies. And now I'll turn the meeting over to Superintendent DiTomaso for the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Kilgus. One of my favorite parts of the uh, Board of Education meetings is I get to share some of the great accomplishments, um, the monthly accomplishments in uh, the format of our strategic plan. So under the category of achievement, uh, elementary teachers from Raymond Center collaboratively planned literary, liter literacy units with the reading specialist, which includes genre study unit and some new novel studies. Grades three through six teachers have received training from Science 21 and New York State on administrating investigation, preparing for the new uh, fifth grade assessment, and we heard about that today. Uh, students in the Introduction to Legal Studies completed their second case brief uh, before spring break, students are assigned cases in preparation for a moot course uh, experience that will take place at the end of May in which they write legal arguments based on their knowledge of case law. In Ms. Stenger's Geometry Foundations class, students participated in a coordinated geometry scavenger hunt. The students work collaboratively, collaboratively to find the distance, midpoint, and slope between various line segments. As mentioned before, Poetry Madness brought together all of our high school students and staff for our annual reading of the Elite Eight. The middle school was even uh, able to live stream the readings in their classrooms and join in in this important tradition. This year's theme, as stated, was honesty 
and the poems did not disappoint. So again, congratulations to all the students and staff, uh, in particular, Ms. Dawn O'Shea and Ms. Sarah Perone for leading this amazing event. Scholastic Art and Writing, Natalie Hayes, uh, one of our star uh, fine art students, uh, received a national gold medal for her drawing, Masking All the Imperfections, in the 2023 Scholastic Art and Writing National Level Competition. National scholastic medals are awarded to approximately 1% of works submitted from across the country. This is a tremendous accomplishment. Each work is judged by visual and literary, literary arts and leaders based on originality, technical skill, and the emergence of personal voice or vision. Established in 1923 and presented by the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers, the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards are the nation's largest, longest, most prestigious visual and literary arts program recognizing creating accomplishments of students in grades seven through 12. It is a symbol of excellence that can bolster resumes, college applications, and scholarships. So that's a tremendous accomplishment for Natalie Hayes. Under the pillar of opportunity, Ram Avenue families participated in a family fun uh, night game show event. The Garden Club is back at Ream Avenue, and we're excited to now offer an after-school elementary basketball clinic with high school coaches. Center Avenue and Ream Avenue sixth grade students were invited to participate in the March Mingle Dance sponsored by Center and Ream PTA. And I'd like to thank them for that. Uh, according to our, our esteemed principals, it was an outstanding event and the kids had a blast and had a great time. A group of five students represented East Rockaway in the Physics Olympics held at Farmingdale State College. Students competed against students from 14 other schools to test their knowledge of all things physics. Students in Ms. Terrio's college math class and Mr. Politi's Algebra II Foundations class visited the National Museum of Mathematics on March 31st, 2023. Students investigated graph theory through a facilitator, led lesson, and then explored the museum. On March 28th, East Rockaway High School juniors who are also members of the Source of Strength program, attended the third annual Long Island Wellness Summit in Merrick. East Rockaway was one of 33 Long Island schools who attended the summit to learn about the signs of mental health and challenges, as Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Healy so eloquently stated today. Uh, under the category of innovation, Ream Avenue classrooms continue to bolster their flexible furniture by adding whiteboard tables, wobbly stools, bike, pedals, and standing desks. This will allow for students' movement while working. The RAIN principles for a day created by GIMKIT math activities to play with first and second grade students. Uh, Center Avenue STEAM classes worked with a partner to create Lego robotics, and they used their cre creativity to put together objects that moved and grooved. The science de uh, department faculty had trained from Explore Learning on argumentative from evidence with gizmos. And I particularly like seeing gizmos. Um, uh, Ms. Forbes and I uh, worked on that last year when I was the, was the assistant superintendent. It's a real interactive uh, program where students can do exactly what was stated uh, today, that they actually are hands-on learning and helping them to understand concepts in lab format. Uh, the East Rockaway Math Department is partnering with Texas Instruments to loan 30 color additional graphing calculators for our seventh graders, this will allow our students to become familiar with the TI-84s before the eighth grade Algebra I course. And uh, this will be an incredible uh, help to our students. Uh, in the area of connection, Rame Avenue, Avenue School hosted a school rules poster contest. Over 100 students submitted a poster and the winners were principal for a day. Students were able to learn about leadership and roles in their school, including the custodian, security, teach, uh, security teachers, and social, uh, social workers and aides. High school students met with Center Avenue and Ream Avenue Upper Elementary students to introduce them to some of the fun activities available at the high school, which included uh, sports night and rock rivalry. Uh, students in Mr. Crowley and Ms. Rafino's Earth Science and AP Environmental class visited the Bay Park Water Reclamation reclamation facility in an opportunity to understand water treatment in the community. And I will say uh, they met with us uh, uh, earlier in the year uh, from the water, rec uh, 
reclamation facility, and they have wonderful opportunities for our students in terms of internship and learning uh, about our environment. Uh, Spanish Four studies enjoyed Peruvian empanadas from a local vendor to conclude the food unit. Students tried two savory ep empanadas made of beef and chicken and sweet empanadas made of guava with cream, cheese, and apple. They wrote a review of each one in Spanish and uh, a thank you note to the owner. I will say I did not get any of those, so I was slightly disappointed. Uh, once again, all junior high school students participated in sports night on April 3rd, 2023, which fostered team building and unity. Students participated in various events. Uh, and if you saw uh, or have had a chance to speak to any of the kids, the energy in the gymnasium was amazing. Uh, you know, the staff did a great job facilitating that. And um, it should be also noted that there was a uh, Students wore shirts designed by seventh grader Samantha Petty, who won the annual t-shirt design competition. So it was great to see those uh, seventh and eighth graders competing and uh, you know, supporting the tradition of uh, sports night. Uh, just a few more. Uh, Northwell Health visits classrooms. Ms. Ma Marina Pedinici, a health educator at Northwell Health, visited ninth grade classes uh, science classes this week to present on the dangers of social media and how to use it correctly. Ms. Pedinici worked with Mr. Kennedy to develop a schedule for the push-in lessons, which are included as part of our partnership with Northwell Health. Uh, sources of strength update. Ms. Deborah Caputo, a certified sources of strength trainer, met with Mr. Kennedy and a small group of teachers on the secondary level on Friday to relaunch sources of strength for the school year. Um, Sources of Strength, which is a research-based upstream prevention program, was designed to prevent students from engaging in risky behaviors by providing them with a structure that emphasizes protective factors such as mentorship, positive peer relationships, and generosity and family support. Yoga mindfulness for staff. So not only are we trying to support our students' uh, mental health, we're trying to support our, our teachers and administrators as well. Um, we have spent a lot of time and resources attending to the mental health and well-being of our students. We recognize that our staff and all our staff have also mental health wellness needs that we want to support. So we're excited to share with you that our very own Christina Imat will offer, <clears throat> excuse me, will offer her expertise to guide a series of mindfulness, meditation, and yoga classes uh, after school. Uh, her schedule will start this April. Uh, and all staff members are welcome to enjoy the benefits of yoga. We want to thank uh, Ms. Christina Iman for offering herself to provide this well-deserved care for our staff. Uh, Malloy Career Center Roundtable Education. Principal Kalia Kelly, right over here, participated as a roundtable panelist at Malloy University Career Center for their education students. All were impressed with Ms. Kelly's professionalism, attention to detail, leadership, and communication skills. We are proud of the contributions Ms. Kelly is making to our district and to future educators. And last but not least, just a reminder that our school budget vote and trustee election will take place on Tuesday, May 16th in the high school large gym. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. We look forward to your participation. Your vote matters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent Di Tommaso. <clears throat> Moving on to item seven, good and welfare. Condolences to Jessica White and family on the passing of our mother-in-law, Carol White. Congratulations to Annabelle and Andrew Kell on the birth of their son, Jack McKenzie, on March 23rd, 2023. Congratulations to Katie Cuck and family on the birth of their son, Liam James, on April 1st, 2023. Congratulations to Heather Figalozzi and family on the birth of their daughter, Ray Rose on April 2nd, 2023. Congratulations to Jessica Malasio and family on the birth of their daughter, Jose Lima Vil Vilma on April 4th, 2023. Congratulations to Alexander Lexi Peritrionio and, fa <laughs> and family on the birth of their daughter, Darcy Grace on April 4th, 2023. Moving on to public comments, item number eight. Please be reminded that the meeting is live streamed and being recorded. I encourage residents to contact the Board of Education at boardofeducation at ersd.org and to contact your child's teacher or appropriate administrator with any concerns. At this time, if you have a comment, please fill out the comment card form prior to speaking. 
to allow for public participation a period of not to exceed 30 minutes shall be set aside for this portion of the agenda and each individual is entitled to three minutes. This time limit will be enforced so that many members of the public who wish to speak may do so. There, we have, okay, we do have a comment. We have one comment. So uh, Randy O'Moore. Jim, take, take this one. Thank you. Okay. My name is Randy O'Moore. I'm a district parent. Um, in either 2016 or 2017, East Rockway held the last e Europe trip that parents pay for, students, we all pay on our own, but the district supplies, uh, plans it, and staff supervise it. It is optional to them. I don't believe that they're paid to supervise it, and they pay their own way. I don't, again, I don't remember if it was 16 or 17. It was way before COVID. I would love to see it come back. My youngest child graduates next year. I stand up here at this time every single year, either this or the last month, every year at a board meeting, and I beg to please consider offering a trip to Europe once again as we used to do annually. Thank you. Thank you. We do have another public comment, um, Chris Webster. Chris Webster, 38 Donald Place. I didn't know about the three minute rule, bear with me. My wife and I moved here 16 years ago. We moved here because East Rockaway is one of the last small towns in Nassau County. We moved here because we wanted our daughter to live in a small town where she was known. We moved here because if I may quote what was once this district's motto, everybody is somebody at East Rockaway schools. But I'm beginning to doubt the truth of that and I'm wondering if everyone does indeed have a voice in this district. I'm the proud father of an East Rockaway High School varsity softball player. She has played for the middle school team under Coach Anderson, for the JT, JV team under Coach Gherkin, and for the varsity team under Coach Lawrence. Through these years, I am now at a point where I know these girls and their parents very well. We are, also, we are a small community of like-minded folk living in a small community. And the small community is still questioning a policy of the district that, for several years, has not been given sufficient attention. I'm here to ask the Board of Ed to reverse policy and let spectators watch these games as they were meant to be. We have no choice but to sit in the bleachers far, far away from the games. I've asked parents who have been part of this for the last few years, and I still don't think anyone has a clear answer as to why we are forbidden from being closer to these games. I am a teacher and a track coach at Southside High School in Rockville Center. A few years back, I was thrilled when an entirely new track was installed at our school. To this day, during non-school hours, when I see somebody riding their bike or rollerblading on the track, I cringe. I know how important it is to keep these tracks in good shape. So is it a matter of the new track and turf that keeps us from being allowed down there? Is it under warranty? I did my research. You can buy mats to put on the track. You can put portable bleachers on those mats to protect them. We are an understanding group. We won't harass you about that. Supervisors can forbid anyone from bringing chairs. Sit on the portable bleachers or you stand. Those are your choices. We can live with that. It's compromise. As I understand it, the portable bleachers are being brought out for track meets, so there is precedence. No one can give me a clear answer as to why we are continually being told no. No one I've spoken to has a clear understanding as to why we are forced to spectate from such a large distance away. I've heard some things, some thoughts, some rumors, however, and these are some of the things I've heard. I was told that when the stadium was first completed, Southwell parents were told that they could not go any closer, but that the district was working on it, and probably next year there would be better seating arrangement. Nothing ever came of that. I was told a parent approached those in charge last June to see about making changes for this softball season. And the parent was told, 
we are working on it. Nothing ever came of it. The same parent was also told to, quote, start a committee, get some signatures, and maybe we can get some changes in place over the next year or two. But I don't understand why we need a committee. We are just simply parents who want to be able to see our children play their athletic events. I was also told the district said, well, this is the way Ms. Ruiz, the superintendent, wants it. She's no longer here. I was told the district said that the nets surrounding the field are not graded for safety and for protection. Who chose the nets? Or why are we allowed to play varsity games at Raymond Avenue, which has no nets at all? I was told emails have been spent and parents have emailed in pictures demonstrating how hard it is to see these ch our children play to no avail, sometimes no response. Now, I can't verify all of that. These are just what I've heard. This is just what parents have told me. I can verify the following. One night last week, at a game held at our high school, junior Sofia Ramirez was playing center field and had an amazing diving catch. If this were the Major League Baseball, it would have played on ESPN, ESPN highlights for the next week. In the same game, junior Stephanie Lynch, playing second base, was able to turn a double play with first base player Leah Ortega. It was an incredibly exciting game for the team and for their parents. The people in the stands went wild, cheering, clapping, celebrating the kids' success. Unfortunately, the girls playing the game didn't hear a word or any of the applause, simply because the stands were too far away to be heard. Later in the same game, we thought somebody was called safe at home plate out of stolen base. Only then to have the ump stop the game, consult with the other ump, and then the girl was called out. In the stands, we had no idea why the girl was called out. We weren't close enough to hear what the ump said. I personally look forward to going to games on the North Shore, up at Glen Cove, for example, a drive, more than home games, because I can see the athletes play. Those games are more satisfying to me than the home games. Sometimes, instead of having a home game at the high school, the girls play at rain. Again, those are the best games. We can see our girls play. When we have a game at the high school, the only way I know when my daughter's up to bat is, thankfully, she has a big number on her uniform that I can actually see. If it weren't for the number, I wouldn't know who was up. I'm not exaggerating. I watch at every game, one of our parents take out his camera and zoom way in and announce to everyone in the stands, okay, whose daughter is uniform number seven? She's up. I have a friend whose daughter plays for another school. He told me that when his school plays East Rockaway at East Rockaway, they don't even bother coming. They don't see any reason to drive to the school when they can't see their children play. It's embarrassing to host games and to see the reactions from the other team's spectators. All the parents I interviewed agreed on one thing. They couldn't pin down any definitive answer as to why we are not allowed to be closer to the games. I'm asking you to please revisit this policy or speak to the people who can. Over the years, we were told next year, next year, next year. We're still way out there. I'm not asking you to respond right now. I'm not asking you to respond to my comments. I am asking you to have the discussion and to communicate with us. I am going to send this speech that I wrote to the Board of Ed and to the Athletic Director. He knew I was coming tonight. I saw him yesterday, and I said, with due respect, I'm going to go speak at the Board of Ed tomorrow night. I'm not looking for conflict. I'm looking for solutions. I hope you will find the next week or two time to revisit this and maybe to respond to me. This year is over. I understand that. We can't make changes now. But next year, we can. So I'm asking the Board of Ed. I'm asking the athletic director, I'm asking whoever is in charge of these rules to please revisit this policy and let me be able to go down and watch my daughter play softball. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, uh, item number nine, board member comments. Anybody, any comments? No, I'll go ahead. Um, you know, looking through our consent agenda, just so it doesn't get lost, we have two people, Tom Barrett, Eileen Hillier, between both of those people in our schools, they have 61 years of service in these Rockwell schools, and both of them are outstanding representatives of the teaching world and the custodian world. So I just wanted to wish them, you know, a, a happy retirement. They certainly deserve the best. And then secondly, again, on a consent agenda, I didn't want to get this lost, was we had a... Uh, Back in September, we had community come out and talk about the playgrounds, that there wasn't sufficient equipment in the playgrounds that were out there. 
And we were working at that point in time, I, I should say, the Shreya was working on that point in time and getting a grant to make sure that we could make that better. And that did come through. So again, not using taxpayer money, but getting grants and securing them for our children to make sure that each have a spot out there and putting around was a really well done job. So thank you. And that's all the comments. Um, Chris, you made some great points. Great, great points. And I think it's something we need to have a discussion about. Um, because everybody wants to see their kids play. And um, honestly, some of the things you said, I didn't even know about, um, I'm just being honest with you. And um, we will definitely have a discussion. We'll, we have to come up with something where parents can see their kids play. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. I'm good. I'll uh, end with a quote as always. An army of sheep led by a lion is better than an army of lions led by a sheep. That's a quote by Alexander the Great. Um, Mr. Webster, very well said. I hear you. I, my son played baseball last year out there. I understand your concern, so we will have a conversation. But, you know, very, very well put. Um, I want to thank all the presenters tonight. You know, great, great job. All you guys, are excellent stuff going on in the district. And. I'd like to thank Mr. McNally for coming at the end right after I was done reading everything. So I appreciate that. Uh, at this time, I'd like to conclude this Board of Education meeting at 8.32 p.m. Can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So, <laughs> motion, motion, motion by Mr. McNally. Second. Second by Mr. DiMatteo. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Staying so. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night.